Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So we are working on my 1986 Ford F-150. This is my baby. This is my daily driver. It's got the automatic lock and hubs. It's four wheel drive. It's got the, uh, well, my brother gave me a little uh, rack for the back there. Right there. It's got the uh, factory mat. And, um, you know, it's got some typical rust, you know, right around here. I got a fix, which I'm going to be doing. Um, but the frame is solid. Everything's solid on the truck. The tailgate, it's got a uh, crack right in the back there that needs to be addressed. But other than that, pretty much how I got it. It had an ugly cap on it. Took that off. And I need to do some work to it. But as you can see, here are the cap corners. Factory. No rod underneath. It's got air conditioning. And it, yes, it does work. So, I mean, this is the XLT Lariat. Featuring a factory 351 Windsor high output. And I have the factory carburetor that I took off, but I, I put this one on there in place of it. Both carburetors are 600 CFM, but this particular carburetor is the Thunder, so it's got a little different mapping. So, a little nicer. It still has the, um, the catalyst sticker in the front here. Let's see if we can show you. Uh, 5.8 liter 351 and I have the original top cover that tells you it's the high output basically it's got the uh, the four barrel intake factory cast iron intake that's pretty much it um, and a 600 CFM um, holly carburetor which was also factory and I put a newer 600 CFM holly carburetor on there and we're gonna be changing some things on it so we're gonna be getting rid of this DuraSpark 2 ignition system so it has the coil mounted here the distributor and the module, the ignition module right there, and all the spaghetti wiring. We're going to be getting rid of that, the wiring, this ignition coil, and that distributor. And I'll show what we're going to be putting in place. We are going to be installing a GM style Chevrolet distributor. Um, this is actually for a Ford. It's been, um, what do you call it there? There's companies that make these. Um, and this one right here is for the 351, which is what this is, and this will fit right in there. This is a one-wire hookup, and it's got the tack wire, all that stuff. So, why am I going to this and getting rid of all that? And what are the benefits to this? Well, this has everything in one. So, underneath this little cover right here is your ignition coil, where mine is bolted up here, and I have an extra wire going down to it. So, that eliminates the coil mount, the coil and the coil wire the ignition module is right there on this one it's actually underneath the cap bolted down in here someplace then I'm gonna get rid of all this wiring and it's only gonna have one wire so that's pretty much it everything else is the same the vacuum advance you can see how it's got the uh, um, hexagon style vacuum advance right here and that's because this is adjustable if it was just a regular smooth coned style it wouldn't be adjustable so there's a little allen head you can put in here and you can adjust this so i'm going to be teaching you guys a lot about ignition timing setting one of these up properly because there is a lot to these they're not just drop in and go um, as you would think that they would be as they talk about in the instructions there is a correct way of doing this to get maximum performance. So it's going to rain right now, so we're not going to do this at the moment, but we are going to go in the house and talk about the distributors, and I'm going to show you guys some of the fundamental differences between the 351 and the 255, the 289, and the 302 distributors, and how they vary and different from the 351, although the motors share kind of the same blueprint. Let's go talk about that. Alright, so we're going to show you guys some of the stuff, but before I do, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post the video, you guys get it. Let me get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a lacking. Okay, so I have two distributors before you. I left the red cap on this one. This is the 302 for the Ford 302, and this one right here is for the 351 Windsor. Okay, so a lot of times people think these, these engines are the same. And they're not. They have different deck heights. 
They have they're wider uh, on the 351 is wider than the 302. So there's a few differences on it, but there's also a distinct um, difference between the distributors. Okay, although they look exactly the same, even if you got a factory one, um, these are aftermarket. But even if you um, if you have a factory one, there is one distinct difference, and it is extremely important. And that is at the bottom here. See that hex right there? Okay, this on this one right here is a, I believe it's a 3 8 And on the 302 is a 5 16 They are smaller on the 302, the 289, 255s. Okay, those engines have a smaller drive shaft. Now, what does that drive shaft do? Okay, this drive shaft, when you put this in, this gear right here meshes with your camshaft. Then there's a little piece, so you get a part of the block that this fits into, that this rides on. And then in there is a shaft called a drive shaft. And that drive shaft goes from the distributor all the way to your oil pump. Now, this is important. Because if someone gives you a 351 distributor, and you're going to, oh, that'll work on your 302. It will not. But here's the big problem with that. The shaft will actually fit inside here, but it will strip around it. So your engine will start and you'll have no oil pressure, okay? Now, it's the opposite with the 302. When you go to put this in, it won't go in all the way because the shaft is too big. It will just bump, bump, bump. It won't fit into it. But if you put a 351 into a 302, it will fit. However, you're going to have no oil pressure and you're going to blow your engine up because the drive shaft is just going to strip out inside there. All right, so that's a very important thing to note that the, there is a difference between the 351 and the 302. Now, let's talk about these aftermarket distributors, okay? These, other than that, they're the same, same body, same casting, same module, same vacuum advances, all that's the same. So here's what I wanted to show you. I'm going to take this rotor off and I'm going to show you guys the guts. Okay, so now I got the rotor removed and you can see here that there are two counterweights. These are your counterweights right here. And as the as it spins, these fly open and they change your advance. So watch this. Sits plate right here where these two bolt holes are. Those two bolt holes hold on your rotor. When the engine spins, okay, and it's going around and around and around, centrifugal force, which is force that is from spinning, it's going to open up these weights and it's going to change the advance. Now, if you watch the angle, I'm going to turn the shaft down bottom. Ready? Watch this. See how it moves? But the, the rotor plate doesn't. That changes your advance. This is your vacuum advance. And when this pulls on that, it also changes. Okay? It's changing down here on the Halifax sensor. So what does this do? Okay? This allows for variable timing, all right? Ignition timing. So when you set your timing with your timing light, after you set it and you get the engine off of idle, the timing changes again. And I'm going to teach you guys all about how to set these things up for your vacuum advance and these springs right here. Now, the nice thing about having a GM distributor is you can go to any performance shop any um, auto parts store and right off the shelf you can buy a spring kit and that uh, on the advanced spring kit for general motors right there these are your two springs there's a heavy one and a light one okay and you can replace these right here now why would you want to replace those well if you tune in a motor you can actually control by changing the, the spring tension how fast or how slow these open what does that do for you? That gets you to what they call total advance sooner or later, depending upon your application and what you're setting it up for. So we're going to get into that on a later video after we get this thing all set up and the primary stuff tuned. Now, I know that's a lot of information and it's going to be easier to show you guys than it is to explain it, okay? But you have a couple of different advances and a couple of different things you can change. One, right off the bat, after you set this, your total advance can be adjusted from your, uh, what do you call it, the vacuum advance, using a supplied Allen head 
which fits inside the hole here and you could turn it right or left so right here it says plus and minus you can see that plus I can turn it this way gives me more turn it that way gives me less all right so what I want to do right now is I want to get into the distributor because I'm not going to use this distributor rotor and I'm not going to use this distributor cap but I do want the coil out of it to fit into the new cap so let me show you guys what I'm using for a cool cap on my truck okay so you have so many options when you switch over to one of these um which I'm gonna call it there GM style distributors you can get a distributor cap in any color you want via red the uh the red they got black they got gray they got um brown all kinds of stuff but one i picked for my truck because i thought it was super cool is this one a clear one look at that ain't that cool i'll be able to see the spark as the rotor spinning it even came with a clear rotor now i'm not going to use the clear rotor but you can if you want to see how the springs advance in fact you know what i'm going to do that i'm going to use it because i was going to put the blue cap because the truck is blue inside there you'll be able to see that spinning but i think it'd be pretty cool if you put this on here instead and you'll be able to see the advance the advance weights moving around in there so i think we'll use this one right here so we'll definitely use the clear one And now I got a clear rotor, and I'll be able to see the advance weights open up inside. That's pretty neat. And you'll be able to see how they can advance underneath the rotor as well. Ready? And I'll, all I'm doing is twisting back here, holding the rotor, and you can see the advances on it. It's pretty neat how that works. All right, now for the distributor cap, I'm just showing you guys the fundamentals on this type of stuff first. Okay, so I'm going to be using the 65,000 volt coil that came supplied with my, um, what do you call it, distributor cap here. So, get it off here, boom, boom, boom. And this right here is what your ignition coil looks like. This is a pretty heavy, this is called an E-coil. And what that is, is these metal plates are in the shape of the letter E. They fit, this middle one right here goes into the coil. And then the other ones come from the other side. And then they're all meet, all screwed together. And welded together. Pretty cool. And now basically what I'm doing is I'm going to change this all over. Now the coil that's in my truck right now is oil filled. Pretty weird, but it's cool. It's got oil in it. And that oil keeps it cool. These e-coils are a little bit more uh, reliable. And the advances in an e-coil has come a long way. Pop this out nicely with your terminals. New cap, so it's going to fit in there really tight. Okay. Just be patient, you'll get them. I try not to push too, too hard on them. Now, at the bottom, the center hole in your distributor cap, there's what they call a carbon button. That's what it looks like right there. It's got a little spring on the end of it. That fits in first. Okay, make sure you get all, make sure there's no debris in your cap at all. Okay, you want a nice clean cap. Okay, the button fits right in the center there. And then you have this rubber pad right here. 
that fits over the spring. The spring needs to go through the center of that. All right. That spring is the contact. That contact is at the bottom right here. That pot right there is where the 65,000 volts of electricity discharge out of this coil through that carbon button to the center of your uh, tab on your rotor and then shoots from here to each one of these terminals on the outside. That is how that works. So you want to make sure you go straight in on it. Sits on there nicely. And you're pushing these in properly. Okay. All right. And if you look at the bottom, you can see that right there is the terminal that's the carbon, so it doesn't wear out as, as quickly. And then on the top, I take my screwdriver and I just push these down. Best as I can get them, and then you have this right here is your ground strap. Okay, so you get this goes onto one screw and then hooks onto it. So let's see if we can get that in without any issues. This one actually goes to the bottom. Some of these I've seen on the top, some go down bottom. This one goes down bottom, so I actually have to lift this back out. Do not forget that. That is extremely important to have that. Without that, you will not run. Okay, the carbon button's in there. Ground straps are on. All the terminals are through on your cap. Then you have a ground wire eyelet right here. You're going to want to make sure that this your screw goes through that. I like to do that one first. And I like to do the one that has the ground strap on it first. Those two are the two that I set in absolute first. If you are using the factory cap right here that came with this blue one, this uh, clear one, okay, when you go to bolt this on there, there's longer screws like this that go through the four bolt holes here. But the downside to that is you're looking at that ugly coil. Now, if that said like, if that was like an MSD coil, or an Excel Super Coil, I would go ahead and use that, that cap. But because it's just a plain Jane, run of the mill, no, you know, coil, I'm going to actually use the blue cap on the uh, clear. So it's going to look like that. Okay. So that'll, that'll hide it, hide that ugly coil. So that's what I'm going with for that. I'm not over tightening these, just go down until they're snug. New caps like this one right here are not threaded. You, when you're doing this, these are self-tapping screws. So you're going to have to um, just bear with it and bring them down until they're all snugged up. You can typically start them by hand, but you only get like one, one or two turns. Now I'm happy with that, so I have my ground strap in, in the middle, right there, and I have my regular ground strap grounded here. I've got plenty of clearance, everything's tucked away in the middle. All the terminals are pushed through. Let me check it one more time just to verify. I can't push down. Okay. I did get a little bit more out of that. And then I'm going to put my cap on the top. And tighten down. 
the three screws that hold that one down. Try to stick my fingernail underneath them just to verify that they're all the way down. Okay. And that, my friends, is what my distributor cap is going to look like. Pretty much all built, all ready to go. RTG. Okay, so one of the things I like to do is take masking tape and make flags. So I made a flag on each color, I mean on each spark plug wire. Now on the intake, on the Fords, it's actually cast. And let me take you off the stand and show you guys what I'm talking about. So you guys know what I mean. Is if you're looking on your Fords, okay, number one is on the left. Actually, if you're sitting in the truck, it goes by sitting in the truck, it's on the right side. All right, but if you look on the intake, you can see this number is cast into the intake. Okay, this number cylinder number two, and then if you look down here on the runner, you can see cylinder number one, um, and on all of them, right there. There's cylinder six, seven, and then eight back there. Okay, so they're all marked. Here's the firing order for the early um, 351s. Now they did change the firing order in the 90s. Okay, when they went to the fuel injection motors. So what I'm doing now is a couple of things. One, I want to reference where I want my vacuum advance and where number one is. So I'm going to put this in the same spot as it is on the truck. Okay, so my truck is at an angle. The cap is sitting straight. And number one is right here. So that's my number one. So with this in the same exact spot number one on this one will be right here. Okay, so we do it. So we mark my distributor. Okay. Alright. So in reference I marked I just took a shoppy and this comes right off too. See you can just take it right off. But I want to mark it. And if it does stay on there for a long period of time you can always use WD-40, it'll come right off. You don't have to tag all of them. I just do that because it's easier for me just to grab that wire and go, it's eight, instead of following all the way down, you know, and then verifying it on the intake. So, remember, it's all in the preparation, you know, when you're going through these things to make sure you're doing them correctly. And, you know, you get the, I put the fire order right up top there so I can rip it off. And I also want to talk to you guys about that um, you see the small diameter air filter assembly you need to run a smaller one on your truck for clearance issues that's the big one right there I had on my truck um, it was like a 19 inch or something like 18 inch I forgot how big it was but how big it is but um, that's the air filter assembly I had and the um, distributor I mean basically hit it right on the end now you don't have to go as small as i did you can go half the size i just wanted a small one it was cheap it was like 20 bucks with a filter so i ran with it and it works perfectly fine on the truck the other part i want to get into with you guys is don't just unbolt this and cut this harness okay because there's a few other wires in there that you need um one of them is your temperature sensor the other one is your oil pressure sensor and the other one is your air conditioner Okay, so you want to make sure you um, you don't cut those wiring, okay? It's very important that you don't. You're going to have to relocate, re, uh, reroute and stuff. So, because, I mean, here's your harness right here. And you can see there's your body harness right there. And then you have, yeah, it, it's just it's a spaghetti mess. It's a spaghetti nightmare is what it actually is. But um, you'll be able to clean it all up when it's all said and done. And part of the other thing is you can look on the back side of these right here. And you can see the corrosion. Right there, see that corrosion? Okay, that makes this unreliable. And that is another reason why I'm going with the single wire hookup. 
is so I don't have to worry about connecting. Because if you're, you're stuck on the side of the road because your wire broke inside, how are you going to know that? You're going to have to do all kinds of testing. You're going to have to get the thing towed home. At least with this one right here, you can take an ignition module, keep it in your glove box, and if you ever break down, you can just switch it out. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's really easy to do. Um, the other benefit to having a GM distributor on a Ford than it is a GM is on General Motors, their distributors aren't in the front. Theirs are in the back. So, you're going to have that. Now, there are some clearance issues you're going to have to do. Like, for instance, I have to remove my coil, but I'm not using it anyway. So, this, this I just bought this, too. This MSD coil is coming off. The bracket's coming off. That comes out. The distributor cap comes off. That's gone in that module. So, that's going to clean up that area right there. It's going to clean up this area. I'm going to have the cap on there. And, of course, where it's a clear cap, I'll be able to, you know, view it, a nice view from the side, you know. And it'll be up a little higher, too. So, I'll be able to view it. So, hopefully that helps you guys. So, listen, I'm dodging raindrops. I'm going in the house for now. And then I'll be back out after. And we'll get into the preparation of setting up top dead center. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because there's a lot of people who don't know the ins and outs. And that's why I'm teaching you guys. So, anyway, guys, thank you. And I'll be back. Okay. So, now we're going to do preparation to pull this out. Okay. So, before we... We touch this thing before we do anything we want to clean all the way around there we want to blow it out make sure there's no debris in there or debris whatever you guys want to call it all right so we'll get my blow gun and get that out I'm gonna um, put you guys in stand and we'll get crack a lack and but before I do if you guys haven't already hit that subscribe button please do so all right in that bell icon so when I post a video you guys get it all right so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna blow out around the base of the distributor so when we pull it out no debris gets in there. And then I'm going to show you guys how to find number one. Now, a lot of people like to pull the number one spark plug out, put the thumb over it, crank it up on the, onto uh, compression. But there's another way of finding number one without even removing the spark plug or the valve cover. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So, let's get you guys at the stand. Okay, I'm just taking my air gun. I'm going to... Well, it ain't crud. It may be around it. Okay. Not too bad. Pretty clean motor. Okay. Now, all cleaned out there. And next step would be to mark my number one on my distributor kit. Number one's here. But I'm not going to mark the cap, I'm going to mark the base where the cap is. So I'm going to right here, I'm going to mark it. Okay, alright. So now that's all marked. I'll do my wire, my keeper. All my plug wires. Then I'm going to unsnap my distributor cap. Okay. And I marked it on the cap, but that don't matter because it's also on the base, which is right there. Now what I got to do is I got to face that rotor at that point. So, no keys in the ignition, leaving the ignition keys off. I'm going to then go over to my starter solenoid. And then I can turn the motor over this way until I get to number one. So when I get close, when I get close, I know I'm there. Okay, I'm pretty close there. Okay. 
Okay. Now, it should be at number one. The engine's running, and right here is where it would fire. Boom. Now, I'm gonna go down to the bottom on the harmonic balancer, where my timing is. Do you see how I marked the red? Right there, you can see how far off I am. So now I'm gonna wind the engine back to get to that point. Um, so it marks up where I wanted it. Okay, I gotta get something in there to do that with. Okay, I couldn't show you how I did that, so I'm just gonna explain to you. I used a, um, a ratchet and a 15 16 socket on the crank, and then I marked my. Um, where are you? Hold on, I gotta find you guys. Hold on. I'm gonna shrink it down for us. Here we go. Alright, so if you look. Down at the crank. Just find you a better spot. Hold on. All right. You see down bottom there. Down bottom with the red is right there. That is my timing marked at. I set that to 10 degrees before top dead center. Um, actually, I went a little bit more than mine, but according to the um, the timing. Right, who is it? Just gotta read your your tag here. And ignition timing, disconnect this plug with the vacuum hose with the trans the neutral. Adjust timing to 10 degrees before top dead center, 800 RPMs max, and then reconnect the hose. Okay, so I set that there. My plug is at number one. This engine was already running. So I'm good there. Now what I got to do is I got to undo the keeper bolt, unplug it, and pull it out. Right now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo my ignition coil and get that out of there. Once you get your two um, wires unbolted, make sure you put the nuts back onto your uh, coil so you don't lose them. And then take off the coil mount. Don't undo the coil, take the whole mount. Take everything with it because the whole thing is gonna be right in the way. And by doing this, it gives you more access. And just screw your bolt back into it. So if you ever have to use it again, you have it. All right. So this is a good coil. So I'm not going to get rid of it. Okay. So I'm going to just take them and hock them on the ground, you know. All right. So now we know that we're on top dead center. That part's all done. We can disconnect the vacuum advance. Just a little vacuum line. Okay. That's all set. All right. Just give me not moving so now I'm gonna take my marker and a long extension so I'm just gonna use a long extension I'm gonna stick it across the rotor up to where it's gonna go up to the carburetor and put a dot okay I wrote right on my carburetor there but it wipes right off see see, see right there I just put it right across there and then over here on the inside I'm going to mark where the tip of my vacuum advance is. I know you can't really see that well, but I marked where my vacuum advance position is. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my distributor. Pull that one through. There's my plug right here. Get that out. Okay. I don't think I can get that out too easy. Good job to pop that out and yeah, push it in. Okay. All right, get that unplugged. Okay. 
Okay, so once the main part is unplugged, this is all set. That's my tachometer wire. Okay, so now that's all set. It's all unplugged. Right there. You can see some of the green. Look at the green on the corrosion. It's crazy. Okay, now I'm going to pull my vacuum advance hose out and tuck it back out of the way. And I'm going to reach under there with my half inch. I don't have a distributor wrench, but if you go on the other side, from underneath you can access your uh, your keeper bolt there's one keeper bolt right underneath there and you should be able to get it with that let's go under the AC to get to it Jesus it's tight okay use both hands if you have to I'm taking it off with my two fingers. Okay. Then you take your keeper, which is this right here, right clear out, put it off to the side, and then your distributor should slide out. Now listen, at the bottom of this, remember that drive shaft I told you about? Sometimes those can stick and they can fall back in. So you want to make sure you, you take it out very straight and easy. Okay. All right. Didn't come out with it. And there she is. There's the old distributor. All right. So one of the things you want to do right off the bat is you want to compare your two gears at the end. And make sure that they have the same thickness and all that type of stuff. And that everything's the same. And you also want to make sure your, your drive shaft is the same on the end. Okay, which these look like they are. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some assembly lube. Actually, this one looks a little bit thinner, but that's all right. I'm going to put some assembly lube on the, the gear at the bottom. Just because I don't like stuff going together dry. Okay. Lubricating the whole thing, and then of course that sealed the o-ring where it mates. Okay. Once you get it all lubricated up, it's time to pop it into position. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going a little bit past where my mark is because this is a turn it's a rotation gear so it's going to uh, fit into the spot where I want it to go so what I have to do is get the seat in make sure there's nothing underneath nothing in its way preventing that from happening like this vent tube right here is going to be in the way. Okay. I might have to reroute that. Okay. Let's get that right out of the way for now. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Move everything that you can out of your way to make it fit in nice and smooth. It's going to sit like that, so no one has to be over more. Okay. Nope. I like that. Yep. Right in that realm. You'll end up finding yourself to be a perfectionist with this once you get it set up. Okay, that's too far over. So I gotta go one more. 
like that. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Hmm. What I'm worried about is making sure that oil pump drive shaft falls into place. Because I'm not nearly down there yet. So, I'm going to pull this back out. Okay, yeah. Takes a few tries, but you'll get it. Okay, so after a few attempts, it got to go in. So now it's sitting all the way in. And now I gotta put my keeper on. So my road is lined up with my dot. My vacuum advance is lined up where it used to be. And the distributor is set in there right now. So let's see if I can move it a little bit. Just a hair, just like that. Yep, perfect. All right, now I'm gonna put my keeper in. Never use this right here to pull it down because you will break it. You will destroy your, your oil pump and you can destroy your shaft. It's a mess. Do not use this to pull it down tight. It should pop all the way in without problem. I'm just putting it in. I am not tightening it. I'm just going to snug it up because I still have to set the ignition timing. I'll show you guys where that bolt is. You guys can't really see too well. And I can't show you guys because I'm in the way. So see right there, the keeper? And that's where it's held in place, right at the base of it. So if you're looking at it. So when you guys are taking it out or doing that, if you guys go through, right through here, this hole right here, you can actually see the wrench. Let me out of here. Okay, you have plenty of access to it. All right, so now I'm just setting my distributor cap in. I'm going to lock it all down. Make sure I'm in the right position. These caps can be a pain in the neck sometimes. Then make sure all your keepers are in the right order, direction I should say. For the lockdown. Okay. There we go. Now we're in the right spot. Oh, so I thought. Okay. So one more time. Yeah, push down on these and turn them until they lock in. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. And like that. Okay, so now they're all in. Alright, so now my number one is right here. Here's my vacuum advance line, so I'm going to push that through where that's going to go. I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to put an angle on that uh, hose because it's going to be into the middle of it, and I don't like that. All right, so we still have some modifications and stuff to do. All right, so now we have your plug here, and this is going to go at the bottom. Put the distributor cap. That's what plugs into your coil and all that happy stuff. 
So make sure it's not chafing or up against anything. Okay. The vacuum hose is probably not going to reach. Well, then again, it might. This is a bigger distributor than the one that came out. So certain things may have to be modified and or adjusted. Like the rerouting of certain things. Take your time and see how your truck feels or car feels. The best direction they will be into without hanging up on anything. Okay, I can do this right here without kinking it. So, all right, cool. So that fit right on there. Good. Okay. And that vacuum line is happy. All right, so I'm happy with, as long as that's happy, I'm happy. All right, now we're going to take our number one plug. Firing over here. All right. So it goes one, three, seven, you know, eight is the last one over here. So I got one, three, seven, and two, which is, where are you, number two? Two, six, where are you, six? Six is right there. Five, right here, four, and then eight. Okay. Hmm. Might have to get a different plug for four, or a different uh, routing on that. Okay, here we go. All right, so now the firing order is on, and we're all situated there. Now I gotta time this thing. All right, so I'm gonna grab my timing light, and uh, well, we'll set up the initial timing. Okay, first step you do when you're getting ready to set your initial timing is take your vacuum hose off. I only put it on there to verify that it would fit. And you're going to use a, a vacuum tee or a golf tee and stuff it in the line. Block off that line. And the reason for that is you don't want a vacuum leak and you don't want the advance to come on. Then you want to verify that you can turn it, which I can. And I'm going to remove my wrench underneath there. Okay. So, using a basic timing light. Let me get you guys out of the situation here. Using a basic timing light, which is that gun right there, I'm going to hook it up to the battery, negative and positive, and then a clamp onto the spark plug wire. And I'm going to start up this truck after I hook up the positive wire. So I'm going to hook up a positive wire going from the distributor right now to the battery so the thing will at least start. And then from there, I will set my timing. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to hook up my red wire. I hooked one up to the positive on the battery. It's starting to rain out, guys. That's going up to my ignition. I already plugged it in. Okay. And now, I'm going to take that black wire, wherever that one, um, and junk it. There it is. Okay, let's see if this thing will start. All right. So there we have it. You can actually see my rotor spinning. Look at that, right, guys, huh? Is that cool? All right, so right now I gotta set the timing. And I know you guys can't see really what I'm doing, but remember that red mark that I lined up? Down bottom there? Well, we're gonna see if we can see it on here. And then we'll just jump six to the bottom. I want it. 
wanted it. Okay? So the timing is set where I want it. And now I'm going to lock down the distributor. So that keeper that's up underneath the distributor, I'm going to tighten next. Okay? Okay, good. Now that's all tight. The next step is to take and unhook up um, your vacuum advance. And now the distributor is set into place. I got a few more things to do to it. Um, I'm gonna take all those things off of the stand the range, so I'm gonna head in the house. Alright, so now we unplugged all the wiring from over here on the side. The ignition module right here, both wires are disconnected. I just got to unbolt it, which I'll do that after. And then I unplugged the main harness that goes from here. So one of those goes up to there and the other one goes up to the, it goes through there and up to the old distributor and two sensors your oil pressure and your temperature and then there's a blue connector and it goes up to the solenoid if you have one on your carburetor which i do not so i took out a lot of stuff so i i separated the wiring harness come on unhook you you're stuck on too okay let's go over to here for a second i separated the wiring harness and for ease of the video okay i unraveled all the tape pulled all the tape off and then here's what I figured I did not need. And here's what I did need. So I needed this one connector. And this is all in the all wrapped into one harness. Okay. So when you're looking at it, this is what the end of it would look like. So you need the harness with the white wire and the red wires. Okay. The rest of this is uh, obsolete. Okay. Here's one coil wire right here that goes up to your coil. And then I taped up nice and neat. This wire right here goes up to my oil pressure sensor. This goes up to the solenoid on the carburetor for the air conditioner, which I do not have on my truck at this moment. This wire right here goes up to my temperature sensor. And this wire right here went up to my ignition coil and I cut off the eyelet and I put on a spade connector heat shrink on there. I do not use non-heat shrink connect this this keeps moisture out just a little, little nicer and a little more quality so now we're going to go install this we know we had it running because well we set the timing on it so we did all that now i gotta lay this in there and see if it'll reach and hook up let me get you guys in the stand let's get doing this sometimes they won't reach sometimes they will we're going to take a shot and hopefully it will it goes in back of the bracket, same place you had it before. Just want to make sure where it sits. So I have it back where it was. I need to plug everything in. So I have my wiring coming through here. Oh, come on, where are you? That's my oil pressure down bottom. I have my temperature up top. And I have my hot lead for my coil. Well, not coil anymore. Unplug that jumper wire we made. Get that right out of here. Plug this in. 
like you're reaching. Okay, so we're all set there. We're making it so it's not going to chafe on anything. Should be a happy harness. Feels happy. I don't like where it's rooted, routed. I'm going to go on this side of the line. It's okay to be a perfectionist. Okay, yeah, let's go under there like so. Nice. Okay, now that is plugged in, I'll show you where I plugged it into. Okay. It's kind of hard to see back there because I'm, I'm working over here and, and my hands are right in the way. So, right on top here where it says tack and battery, you want to hook it up to battery. Okay, and it's just going to plug up inside there into that first one. The second one is for your tachometer. And that is this black wire right here. That I had on my other, um, that was on the ignition coil itself at one time. So now I'm going to have to change out the end. And plug that in as well okay so real quick um, what I did was I used my I thought I was recording but I wasn't I used my dial my dielectric grease in the connector you can see how my tabs were broken so I did the old zip tie through the middle of two wires all the way around to lock it in the place make sure it's good and then I'm gonna put it back in its keeper for where it came out of so here it keeps it nice and snug uh, out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. These are here are not being used no more. So I'm not going to cut them. I'm just going to tuck them in and leave them up in there. And I'm going to take that box off later on. But right now I want to see if it will start. And I put my black wire. So on here this says um, battery and tack. So tachometer goes up to my wire. My tachometer that goes up to my, um, well, my tachometer. And the positive wire. So now I'm going to see if it'll start. I didn't run any wires. I just used the, um, whatchamacallit there. I just used the wire that was there that went up to the coil. So let's try it out and see if she starts. Okay. And the other thing we want to make sure is that we have oil pressure and that the rod did not fall off. Okay, we have power, tachometer's working. And we have oil pressure. So that, my friends, is a win-win. Oh yeah. I just want to say thank you for hanging out. That's how it's done. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to answer, ask me and I'll answer them for you. And uh, this is the HEI distributor, GM style, and a 351 Ford, 1986. Talk to you guys later.